AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawksport Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Pro Air Federation, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, H&N Sport Pellets, Air Marksman Air Gun Accessories, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Hey guys, we are here in the Predator International JSB booth and with me I have Jay, who is the owner of Predator International JSB, and Joe, who is the operations manager for Predator International JSB. Lord of lead. Lord of lead, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Pavel, all the way from the Czech Republic, who is the director of operations for JSB. Hi. And, hi. <laughs> and we're going to try to get you through quite a bit of information today. So I guess the questions that I've been hearing from these guys are really are a lot. And maybe we'll start with production. Are, you know, maybe we could speak to, are we caught up? Is there a surplus? Is there, are you still guys scrambling? Like, where are we at with all that? Well, I can speak to that. We, we have been struggling a lot for the last almost two years to, to keep enough in stock to take care of the demand that we've had. It's been uh, tremendous. That has been slowing down a bit. And so we're now having stock in the warehouse and hopefully it'll be better for everybody. We can ship pretty much on demand, whatever anyone needs. Uh, almost right now, but within about a month or two, I think we'll really be there. Great, now one of the interesting questions I've heard posed from these guys, is there's always chat on the forums like, you know, what happened, what caused the slowdown? And huh. so this is our chance to maybe get through some rumor control. And just kind of be transparent, bring them in on your challenges and what you guys have been struggling with the last couple of years, so. What's well, I think it, it's, it's, it's never, you can't know for sure, but I, my sense is that, that, that it was the pandemic and everybody's staying home or isn't allowed to go to work. And uh, the guys who like to shoot are shooting all day long because there's nothing else to do. Right. And I think there was even some, some firearm shooters, you know, uh, who couldn't get ammunition and uh, found out how cool air guns were. And then uh, they started buying the, the pellets as well. So I, I think that's the, the crux of it. So if I'm hearing you right, it's not that there was a there was a problem with supply. It's that I think I've heard you right. The demand really spiked. Yes, right. That it was more demand than supply. Okay. Uh, they've increased their supply and their ability to produce at the factory uh, quite a bit in the last few years. Is that Pavel, right? Pavel, yeah. yeah. Do you want to bring us up to speed? Yeah. Absolutely. Another reason for uh, the, the better availability is that the, we increased the capacity of our production like 20 percent last year, and it's going to be another like five percent for 2023. <coughs> Well, uh, it was connected with uh, some investments. We had to build new machines. We hired new and trained new operators. So all that. It's really interesting hearing all this because the rumors you saw floating around on the forums is that, oh, everybody went home and no one can work. But right. what I'm getting here is just that the, the demand soared over those couple of years. And it was, you guys it were describing the not, not just the US, all around the world. All it around the world. all around the world, yeah. Very I can tell. Very interesting. Joe, um, we're gonna guys get into, like I'd love to get caught up on what you're doing with pellets and slugs, okay. say the last two years, because it's been a long time since we've been together. By the way, if you guys haven't seen this yet, just Google AEAC, or YouTube search, or Google AEAC JSB factory tour, and we've got a great uh, tour video there for you from the JSB factory in the Czech Republic, with Pavel here, so check that out, good stuff. Um, guys, uh, what's the deal with slugs? Always questions from these guys. Where are you at on all that? We're well, here. You can pick <laughs> yeah. feel, feel free to hit rewind even um, like two years back because it's just been well, so long. Time. But two years back, the 22 knockouts were being introduced. Um, they were at the 216 and the 217s. And then from there, it went to the 25 knockouts. And they were the 251s. And I know I'm speaking a normal pledge for a lot of people. And then after those were the one seven seven the two uh, ten point zero three and the thirteen point four three. Then the Mark two twenty five slugs came out. Then the thirty caliber knockouts came out, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, which was last year, um, beginning of last year. And then the two and eight slugs fi have finally come to the shores, and that was within a few months um, ago, um, towards the end of last year. And of course, the 35 Hades have come out too. Yeah, speak to that. I've heard a lot of talk about the Hades lately. The 35 Hades are amazing. 
I actually let a buddy borrow one of my 35 rifles to go on a hog hunt. Mm -hmm. He had 35 Hades. He was able to drop a 120 pound um, sow at 60 yards with a headshot. It, they, and he, he recovered the um, Hades. It was a lot of deformity. It was an amazing feat with that because it was a, the um, AEA um, HP Max, a little short barrel on 35. Mm -hmm. Does about 136 foot pounds. And it just demolished that, that pig. But the, the slugs, have really come a long way. I personally shoot the 13.4 three grain 177 knockouts at Prairie Dogs, which I'm trying to get you out there for. I would love to do that. You with need you. to. And um, I'm taking <laughs> invitation break. accepted. There you, go. you guys <laughs> don't have to ask me twice. Yeah, see, but um, I'm I'm taking Prairie Dogs between 100 and 200 yards. With it. Can you, Joe? Can you speak to like the, for these guys to just have a learning moment with mm -hmm. slugs versus pellets, like? How do they know, you know, in their air gun, do I, do I choose a pellet or do I choose a slug? Could you maybe speak to which velocities are appropriate for each? See, and, and that's interesting because I've seen people who have brake barrels that are shooting the 177 slugs at 10.03 grain, mm -hmm. and they're actually getting half inch groups at 50 yards, you know, 25 to 50 yards, and uh, I, that's impressive. It's a brake barrel. They're, the slug, slugs are maybe going 650 to 700 feet per second, mm -hmm. and those slugs are performing. But then I, I know other people have brake barrels and they, they can't shoot slugs. It just, they won't feed in there. Sometimes the slugs are just a little oversized for mm -hmm. their bore. So, you know, a lot, it does come to speed too. Pellets will like the lower speeds. We all know this. So can you give us a, like a range? Like what range is ideal for pellets generally and what range would be ideal for slugs? For pellets, anywhere from 400 feet per second or, or you know, depending on what you're shooting, up to 950, you know, 1,000 if, you know, for, for guys shooting a monster redesign. Yeah, like a redesign shape. You know, and um, for slugs, anywhere from 800 to over 1,000. They're cruising, they're stabilizing a lot better, they're, they're reaching out to longer distances better. Okay. And I've done it with, with, with like the MK2 um, King Heavies. I've shot those out to 220 on target, and they, they're, they're accurate, but they have that longer profile. So, and again, a test of being a slugger has that longer tapered pro profile without yeah. a skirt. Mm -hmm. It's aerodynamic. It's so the made, skirt is like a parachute. It kind yeah, of exactly. stabilizes it slow, it, at slower speeds. It will um, for going out the distance especially. And, you know, if you're punching paper, you use pellets. Gotcha. If you have anything, to, I have a question for you, but if you have uh, something wanna, else. But I if just want to add, add yeah. something to yeah, the topics of the uh, Hades no. and the knockout slugs. There are new uh, lines in our product range and we are still working on them and we will build build it, that range in the future as well. So we want to add uh, more Hades and we want to add more knockout slugs in the future. Okay, I I'm glad you touched on that because the question I had brewing was, I've heard talks where you know the, the community is wanting a heavier Hades. In 22? Because they love that Hades. That's for sure the next step we are preparing for this year. So, so you've, you heard, you've heard that? And yeah, absolutely. We have heard it and we are working on it already. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we're, we keep our ear down to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, so wrapping it all up, do you want to speak to, I know you're heavily, Joe's been heavily involved in the hunting community. Yes. And I know JSB and Predator, you guys have been heavily involved on the circuit as far as events going and what you're behind in sponsoring. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? Uh, sure. Well, we'll be at the at the at the events that uh, we typically go to. That's uh, the RMAC, uh, EBR, um, the new one, the Northeast Air Guns. Yeah, Northeast Nat, Air Guns. I'll We're be at that. So We're excited for that one. GSB's factory is also attending a few competitions in Europe okay. and all around the world. Uh, hunting, hunting field target, field target. Also the 10 meter the Olympic shooting stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, and Air Force events. also has a. Uh, the Texas kind of air gun show. Texas yeah. air gun show. Like there's too. You know, before we bounce into the, the great stuff Joe's been working on, I did want to ask you, when I was at your factory, I saw like world-class professional shooters. Um, do you want to speak that, you know, talk a little bit about your involvement with them and your role with them, Pavel? Yeah, absolutely. That could be really interesting. Those are quite a few Czech uh, talented shooters, especially the youngsters, to help them, uh, to support them with uh, on their way uh, to become professionals. And we also sponsored quite a few uh, whole teams, like we started to work with the French Shooting Federation. We, of course, support uh, in the long term the Czech Shooting Federation and uh, many other top class shooters all around the world. Super, super cool. Joe, do you want to close it out? You've been working on something special kind of back home that's you know, really meaningful. Like, you know, I like, I like the hunt. I like, the, I, like, I like the sheep prairie dogs. That's my thing. But I've been working with Colorado Parks and Wildlife. I have a friend, a couple friends in the, in the division. 
and they were the ones um, who were able to help me get small game for air guns. Well, recently we just got wild turkey for air guns, which is a, a huge feat because it's taken us years to get anything else added to it. So um, starting this fall and late season, we'll be able to hunt turkeys with 25 caliber or bigger air rifles, which is really nice. Good job, buddy. And thank you. And then, thank um, you for that. But about in September, we, uh, or October, no, December, sorry, December's been so long. December, we did a big board demonstration for the Colorado Parks and Wildlife and Predator JSB, uh, Travis Peacock of Air Gun Outdoors, and Jim Fisher, the Colorado Air, um, Air Gunner. Um, we all went there and did a big board demonstration and showed them the power, you know, discussed the power of the rifles. The new states that are coming forward, like Idaho, who have, who have really great hunting laws. And um, we really get people who didn't shoot to actually shoot that day. And I remember one lady in my head, because she kept on walking closer to my table, I said, like, you might be here, you might as well shoot the rifle. She went down the entire line and shot everything and had a great time. So nice. it's it's actually really easy to bring people on to that. And this was the staff, the people who actually make the recommendations. So now we're working on getting, hopefully getting verbiage together. Um, and who knows, maybe this year we'll have a big game too. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you all for, uh, for what you do for the, the industry and the community. And thanks for getting on camera in front of these guys. I know that's a tough thing to do at 9 o'clock in the morning on a Friday, last day of the show. And thank you as well. Yeah, especially thank being you. so far from home, thank you. Pavel. Thank you. Appreciate you. Joe? Jay, thank you, Steve. Have a great rest of your show, guys. Be safe to pump, sir. Thank Cheers. you. Love you, Steve. Bye. <laughs>